cornerstone of our transformative constitution. Furthermore, in defining the parameters for constitutional amendments in the BBI case and establishing principles of public participation in the BAT and recently in the Finance Act cases, the court's jurisprudence has strengthened the democratic foundations of governance and harmonizing the judiciary's benchmark on the areas of public participation that still requires parliamentary action. The court's decisions have also directly addressed issues of land rights, human rights, social and economic justice, and family law. In the same vein, the courts have addressed housing rights jurisprudence in the Me Too Bell cases, which reflects the court's commitment to socioeconomic rights. The courts uh, have set jurisprudence guiding the families on how to help hold the family as the cornerstone of our society. In these and countless other judgments, the Supreme Court has affirmed its role as a transformative agent in the society. Despite the inevitable pitfalls of perception, all capture that come as a result of the court's invitation to address political questions, the court's jurisprudence has purposefully honest the Constitution as a powerful tool to promote the well-being of individuals and driving societal transformation for the common good. Notably, the decisions of the Supreme Court of Kenya have garnered significant respect and citation across the region and beyond. This recognition in the global legal community underscores the court's maturity into a respected institution whose well-reasoned judgments contribute to the evolving discourse on the law and justice worldwide. Your Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, the journey of the Supreme Court has not been without challenges, as explained by the Honorable Lady Justice Joki Dongo. But as we strive to deepen jurisprudence and protect the Constitution, the court is often called to balance divergent interests and expectations while upholding the law. It is important to appreciate that the Supreme Court's jurisdiction to a large extent as a political dimension. Given that this court handles matters touching on governance, the exercise of political power, and presidential election petitions, the court inevitably gets drawn into disputes relating to the exercise of a political mandate. And this has rent to the court being subjected to political verification and being a target of political rhetoric over the past three electoral cycles. I want to take this opportunity to assure Kenyans that in the discharge of our mandate, we do not get drawn into making political decisions. We look for legal solutions for political disputes. The judges are politically neutral and are concerned with only determining the legal and evidential issues before the court, irrespective of their political ramifications. Going back to the history that informed the jurisdiction vested in the Supreme Court, particularly the exclusive jurisdiction to hear and determine presidential election disputes, there is need to sustain public confidence and trust in the Supreme Court. Without a court to turn to for resolving political disputes, our country will risk being left without an institution
to arbitrate and resolve these disputes that involve politics and governance. And these disputes have the potential to tear down the country. I therefore urge political prayers and other Kenyans to reinforce and build public confidence in the work of the judiciary and the Supreme Court. Recently, I have been reflecting on the role of the three arms of government and the need for each arm to shield the other from taking on mandates that are separated by the Constitution so that we can truly live by the spirit and principle of separation of power. When courts are invited to deal with political questions presented in a legal nature, there is an inevitable risk of being drawn into perceptions that plague political play. Although this is an Anglo-Saxon problem, as we see in jurisdictions that require some political jurisdiction from their apex courts, we must, and indeed, we do approach every issue with legal lens. It is important that political institutions exhaust all political solutions and only turn to courts as a matter of last resort. And when I look back at what happened to us in 2007, when we were visited by post-election violence, when I look at what happened in 2017, and also 2022, the Mandamano, and the creation of the Nusumukate or half roaf bread government, the handshake government, and now the broad based government, I always wondered had we sat down under our provisions of Article 159 to reason together and resolve the dispute before we went into fighting each other, we would have been very far as a country. So let us embrace the provisions of 159 and do NDL or what we are calling court and exa mediation or alternative justice system to resolve the disputes that visit us especially politically. We have resolved those three cycles of disputes as the Supreme Court, but the answer given by the Supreme Court is not what carried the day. What happened at the table through negotiations in those arrangements, including the creation of the broad-based government after the dispute in 2022 elections, is testament that political solutions to political problems is possible. Although courts remain ready to delve into complex legal issues arising out of political processes, we must require all institutions to exhaust constitutional alternative dispute resolution avenues to strengthen the cohesion in our society. In today's rapidly evolving world, New dynamics continue to reshape the legal, political, and social landscapes in which we operate. Challenges such as deepening social inequality, the urgent realities of climate change, political competition, which introduce complex issues that demand careful navigation and thoughtful judicial responses. The advent of emerging technologies also bring both opportunities and risk, particularly in the realm of information, misinformation, and disinformation, especially as they proliferate through social media and have the potential to influence public opinion, disrupt democratic processes, and even affect judicial independence. For the Supreme Court, to continue fulfilling our mandate effectively, close interinstitutional and collaboration and support are vital. Upholding the rule of law and protecting constitutional rights 
is a collective responsibility that calls for cooperation and respect among the judiciary, the legislature and the executive and other state agencies. I therefore call on collaborative relationship that will strengthen our